Welcome to my Persian kitchen. Let me take you on a culinary journey of Iran. I'll introduce you to the ingredients, the dishes, and the people of this enchanting and misunderstood country. I was born in Iran, but spent most of my life outside, dreaming of the foods I'd grown up with. I inherited my love of food from my grandparents, who grew prized grapes and other fruits and vegetables on their land, and my father, a well-known restaurateur. Now a chef and cookbook author, I have the chance to go back and rediscover the sights, sounds, and tastes of the Persia I once knew. To show you how easy it is to recreate this style of cooking at home, you'll see how I prepare Persian food in my own kitchen abroad using everyday store-bought ingredients. I'm Ariana Bundy, from my land and kitchen to yours. I'm in the enchanting and fascinating country of Iran. The lush green shores of the Caspian Sea in the north of Iran are unique in this mostly arid country and a place of magical childhood memories for me. A twisting and often terrifying four-hour drive over the Alborz Mountains from Tehran, the Caspian is an important agricultural region and also a major vacation getaway for many Iranians. As a child, I spent many summers here at my grandparents' house, surrounded by citrus orchards and flanked by densely forested mountains. By day, we would frolic on the beach, splashing in the waves while my grandfather would take his daily swim way out into the distance. Returning as an adult, I'm captivated by the amazing aroma of the citrus trees and the humid forest, and by the warmth and openness of the people some of the friendliest you can meet in this incredibly hospitable country. Thanks to its humid climate and rich soils, rice paddies and tea plantations dot the green hillsides of the Caspian. Although production is far too small to satisfy domestic consumption, the Caspian varieties are highly prized throughout the country. I've come to meet rice and tea distributor Mr. Aqajani to learn more. یه سری از برنجاتون رو بهم نشون بدین ببینیم چی در حال حاضر برنج هاشمی داریم هم کهنه شو داریم هم تازه کهنه چند سال بعد کهنه باشه یا چند وقت کهنه بعد از دو ماه میشه کهنه بعد از دو ماه میشه کهنه تا چقدر هم میتونین نگارش دارین جای خشک و سرد باشه بلکه یک سال یک سال دیگه یک سال نیم بله واسه گفتین چند وقتش این اون حدود 8 ماه قبل 8 ماه اینم تازه اینم تازه بعد و این چیه دودی هم مال هوش ماه برنج دودیه بله بله دیوانه‌کننده‌ آها اون وقت اینجا چی اینم اینا مال لاهیجانه ده... بله اونم لاهیجان اون درجه دویه اونم بهاره است If you visit only one restaurant in the whole of this beautiful region it should be the incomparable Khawar Khanum the tireless and charming Khawar Khanum herself somehow manages to produce spectacular local specialties from a sweltering and cramped kitchen which droves of visitors literally queue up for every single day صبح بودن چهار دکارگر من خیلی زود میان صبح زود یه قابلمه بزرگ و مرگ شکنپو رو میزنم اول میپزه وقتی که پخت بر میداره میارم آبش قشن میکشیم اونو تمی... با چی میپزیم؟ با زرچوبه و دارچین و 
پیاز اینا که مثلا بوی زوق به مرغ بگیره ماهی هم همون جور چه ماهیه ماهی این ماهی سفیده یکی ماهی قزله سرخش میکنیم تو ماهی تبه سرخ میکنیم میذاریم توی آره اینا مرغای محلیه نه نه مرغ روزه مرغ روزه آره مرغ محلی کجاست مرغ محلی قله روزی من 50 60 تا دونه مرغ مرغ شکم پر درست میکنم نمیشه این برنج محلیه برنج محلی اینجاست این برنج هاشمی برنج دودی هم داریم دودی اینجا کمی استفاده میشه ما سافرامیان از تعم نه از تعم برنج شمالی عطرش رو خوشش میاد سیر ترشی میرزا قاسمی As you can see, Khawar Khanum is a ball of energy who is on top of everything the kitchen serves. باقلی نیست این لوبیا یک کشاورزی میرزیم توش خوش بس باقلی لیه میشه باقلی برسی خوش سفت این سفت دون دو بر میگرد ببین اینا توشیه اینا توش دونه دونه دیگه آره از اینا برنج ببین انا شما اومده میگه میاد میگه ما چهار نفریم اینو میگم چهار نفره بعد اینجوری قشنگ تچیم میکنیم ما بعد میرزیم سیرش تچیم میکنیم یه سر روغن میرزیم که سیرش چرب باشه اینی که گفتم ماست و دارچین تخم مرغ اینا میرسم یه اندازه ای یه سر آب جوش میرسم بخار بکنه که برنج تعدیل این تعدیلشه بعد اینا برنج آب کش شده صبح آب کش میکنه میذارم تو آب مسافره موقع بیاد یعنی چه آب کش کرده بولولکی بعد بر میذارم تچیم میکنم البته من دیگه همه این کارها رو خودم انجام نمیدم یک دو دفعه بچا یاد دادم ماشاءالله بچا همشون زبر زرنگن یه دفعه یاد بدم یاد میگیرن اینا روشم میذارم دو نفر اینجا هستن یکی مسئول این کار اینا رو میذاره اینجا یا آقا این محمد آقا مسئول اینایی که بخار بکنه میگه محمد آقا برنج پنج نفره محمد آقا این برنج پنج نفره این اینجا این ماست و دارچینی که رفتن بخواده این میخدم خواهش میکنم ماست دوست داریم مرسی دوست دارم این مونم من بخورم خوششون بیاد Khawar Khanum's multitasking knows no bounds, and as you can see, it is no easy task given the popularity of a restaurant. <laughs> I wish you could be here. It's like magic. The air, the sea, the mountains, the food smells divine. Delicious kebab torch, which is a pomegranate and walnut. Oh, Now this is a local fish and smells great, fresh. No wonder people here come by the hundreds to have Mrs. Khawar's food. So this is sir torshi, pickled garlic. This one is not that, uh, it hasn't been aged for that long, but prime chili, perfect with this kind of food. It's really part of the culinary culture here. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. You've got the bagali gato, which is also a famous dish in this part of the um, country. Mm. It really melts in your mouth. The dill, the beans, bagala, not bagali. And Mirza Ghasemi, which is the eggplant and the tomato, very smoky. And she doesn't use any oil. Morga mm. torch, which is chicken. Um, which is also marinated and some lovely spices. Mm. Absolutely gorgeous. 
The crew couldn't wait to join in and sample the food. Salman Ali was clearly feeling left out. The Caspian region has the most amazing fruits, so for dessert, I'm going to try some of the famous jams of this area. There's everything from citron preserve to sour cherry pickle, blackberry jam, and many, many more. Inspired by the kebab torshahat, I'm going to recreate this recipe in my kitchen using a whole piece of tenderloin. Whereas in other parts of Iran, they use yogurt and saffron and lemon juice to marinate their meat and kebabs. In the Caspian region, especially in Gilan, they use pomegranate paste and pomegranate juice and walnuts. Really simple, simple recipe. Here, lovely piece of meat. We're just making a marinade and we don't want pomegranate juice staining our fingers. Ah. Okay, so we've got walnuts that have been finely ground, almost like wet sand. We're just going to add that to the tenderloin. Some grated onions, a couple of cloves of garlic pomegranate juice and if you can find the Iranian brand even better and the magic ingredient is pomegranate molasses or pomegranate paste and it's got that sweet and sour note going on and then if you need just a little splash of water some salt pepper go ahead and massage this whole thing in little nice back rub here. So the onions are going to tenderize the meat. The acidity from the pomegranate juice and the molasses are go really going to tenderize the meat as well. It's just going to add so much flavor to this beef. And I'm just going to use a little bit of olive oil. And we're just going to cover this and let it marinate for about 24 hours until it's nice tender and flavorful. I'm just going to remove some of the marinade so that it doesn't burn in the process of grilling. And remember, you don't want to cook this too much because pomegranate juice, the paste, and the onions have sort of cooked the meat a tiny bit. Okay, ready? Here we go. Oh, let me hit the fan. Okay. Perfect. Looks about ready to flip. Ooh. Nice. Smells amazing. Of course, it's better over charcoal, but if you don't have a barbecue at home, this is the next best thing. Mm -hmm. Now I think it's time to remove this. Mm. And let it rest because all the flavor and all the juices are going to stay in the meat if you let it rest for about 20 minutes. Mmm. Mmm. Very. Cut it nicely and plate it up. After 20 minutes of resting time, nice and rare in the middle, I've made myself some mashed potatoes with saffron. It's just plain mashed potatoes and I put some saffron water in it and mixed it up. Mm. It's not very traditional. They usually eat it with rice, but I thought the combination might be quite good. A little bit of the molasses and of course some pomegranate seeds. The moment of truth. Mmm, the meat is char-grilled with a taste of pomegranates and walnuts and super tender inside and it goes so well with the pomegranate seeds and the saffron mashed potatoes. Beautiful.
Back in Iran, I head east to Khorasan in search of the delicate crimson jewels that yield one of Iran's most precious exports and the most expensive commodity by weight in the world. Ninety-two percent of the world's saffron production is grown right here in the region of Khorasan. These beautiful plants bloom in autumn and only for two weeks throughout the year. So we're really lucky to be capturing this special moment. Bah, bah, bah. Beautiful. بعد این خود برگوش رو شکار میکنی؟ پرشم بعد از این که پرشم رو جدا کردیم این گوله بنفشش رو خوش میکنیم جوی جداگانه برای رنگیزی یا برای رنگ کردن نخ قالی این قسمت زد رنگ داخلش هم درمان داروی داره یا این که برای پخت نون هم ازش استفاده میشن پخت نون؟ آره تو نون رو همون خمیر نون رو تذیر میکنن به رنگ خاصه رنگ نون به خصوصیه؟ نون زفر آره میشه گفت همیشه چیزی حتی اون قسمت داخلش هم قابل استخاره است During the harvest, daily bazaars spring up where traders haggle and compete to buy saffron flowers from local producers by the sackful. They scrutinize the beautiful flowers with care. This is serious business and very much a domain of men. But as I was about to discover, the key stage in the saffron production process is performed by the local women, who are employed by the traders during the harvest season. These lovely ladies have invited me to their homes to show me how they actually remove the stamens from the flower itself. And as you can see, it's pretty arduous work. Pass <laughs> 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 بعدش درش یاری خب انقدرشو میکنم که فقط یه خورده از زردیش بمونه بمونه دیگه جداش میکنیم خب شما چند ساله تو این کاری؟ چند ساله؟ بله ده ساله آن ده ساله بله اون وقت یه دفعه در سال هم با این کار انجام میشه نه؟ بله بعد اون وقت گلا وقتی میرسن باید بلا فاصله اینا رو بردارین نه میگن میچسبه به گل بله اگه جمع شانه کنن اینا خراب میشه دیگه باشه. یعنی فردا نمیتونی این کار انجام بدی. میون لاغل باید جمع شد بکنم از رو زمین بعد بیا پاک شو کنم نه خراب بره. پلاستی دم بره دیگه واس برادر. In the nearby city of Mashhad you can find every type of saffron product imaginable. Iranians love using saffron in absolutely everything, from stews to rice dishes, teas, sweets, everything. And we have here saffron and tea and saffron powder. Uh, and that's really great because normally we'll crush saffron and then um, make it into a powder. So this is really convenient. And pills, this is really, really cool. And of course, the regular saffron threads and saffron spray. What do you know? I don't know. I mean, it's like hairspray, a uh, breath freshener, uh, or used on rice dishes. So at the last minute, you can color your rice and on kebabs. I think it's very inventive. And here is what Westerners consider a pinch. And this is what Iranians consider as a pinch of saffron. In a kitchen. Saffron dastas. Dastas. Yeah, it's me. Dogtar pinch. 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 Dogtar
پوشال پوشال این آره. این دو تا یک بله دو تاش پوشال خب نه کیفیتا یه مقدار این درجهش پایین تر تا پایین تر تا اون از لحاظ کیفیتی ولی بهش میگم پوشال اینا سرگل میگم این دسته بهش میگم آها سرگل از همه بهتره سرگل بهتر است جنسی که اول به دست میاد اینه این این اولشه در از یه درجه زعفرون داریم آره زعفرون اون که تو زمین هست اون تو زمین هست گل زعفرونه این قسمت توی ساقه زعفرون بله. ساقه گل این تو هر گل سه تا از اینا سه بله. تا از این گل برگزار و هر هفتاد هزار گل حدودا یک کیلو زعفرون میده هفتاد هزار تا گل یک کیلو زعفرون بعد یه چیزی هم دارین که سفیده اون چیه این همین ساقه زعفرون همین قسمت ساقه است که جدا که شده تو آشپزی برای حالا جایی میخوان که رنگ نداشته باشه برای غذاهایی که رنگ شده. نداشته باشه اون عطرش عطر فقط بده مثلا تو چی میریزن اینا از رستورانه که میخوان حالا عطر بیشتری داشته باشه اون چون ارزون تره با این مخلوط میکنن بعد میذارن Speaking of restaurants, no visit to Mashhad would be complete without a trip to Pesarone Karim, which specializes exclusively on spectacular lamb dishes. This is definitely not a place for vegetarians. These guys are lamb professionals. A restaurant by the name of Pesarone Karim, which means Karim Sons. It's very, very famous for its cello gushed here, which is tender lamb confit and lamb chops or shishlik. Uh, very famous here in Mashhad. Uh, Shandiz is also another restaurant that serves this um, not only in the rest of the country but also throughout the world. And some tender leg of lamb and kebab bag, which is also lamb tenderloin barbecue to perfection. So I think I'm going to try this one because this is quite famous. A friend of mine said you have to go to this restaurant and try this particular dish. Check it out. Mmm, amazing. Tender, so simple. The owner was telling me that he only uses salt and pepper and onions, no other spices, maybe a little bit of turmeric. But he really concentrates on the quality of the lamb. And I'm gonna go for the shishlik now and squeeze a little bit of lemon on top. Add a little bit of somal. Mm. Little bit of this kebab bag with somal. Mm. So tender. I'm going to show you how to make the perfect Persian rice with long fluffy grains and a crunchy delectable tahini. Use the best basmati rice you can find. Rinse it four or five times until the water runs clear. That's the best way to get rid of the extra starch. Place your rice in a large pan filled with boiling water. Add some salt and let it cook. Okay, after about six, seven minutes, you're gonna pick up a few grains and you're going to test it between your fingers like this. And if it is soft on the outside but still hard in the middle, very al dente, you're gonna quickly take it off the heat and strain it. After straining, add cold water to it to stop the cooking process and again to get rid of the extra starch. In a heavy non-stick pan and on medium-high heat, add your melted butter or ghee or oil, a little bit of yogurt if you like, and then your crushed saffron mixed with warm water. Add a generous spoonful of the parboiled rice and mix it all up. 
This is the trick to getting that crunchy tadig which Iranians love. Add the remaining rice and shape it like a little mountain. Pierce some holes all around making sure to touch the bottom of the pan. Add some water mixed with a little bit of oil or butter to the rice to help it steam better. Okay. Cover the lid with a clean tea towel, lower the heat, and let your Persian rice steam away to perfection. To top it off, add some saffron water to a spoonful of the steamed rice and decorate your rice with it. Here I've made brown basmati rice, which is an amazing alternative to the regular white rice. And here we have the famous tadi, the crispy rice that you find at the bottom of the pot. And everybody fights over this. In fact, people who love tadi are always looking around at other people's plates to see if they've got more than their fair share. Mmm. Uh -huh. There's a very uneasy silence going on over there. <laughs> I think it's itchy. <laughs> it's not itchy. Down. It's not itchy. Down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry. Ye jum'e ye bahari, tu kuch ye kinari, ye te mehmoon budan.